to headline stories we're now joined by uh, a gentleman of the fourth estate of the rem and also public affairs analyst from the people's reporter we have honorable desmond olariwaju forwobi good morning to you uh, good morning Beatles. uh good morning shiji okay uh good morning nigerians well, let's quickly set the ball rolling. Um, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, President uh, Olusha Gunabasanjo, has made recently made some really, really strong um, claims and allegations towards the National Assembly. You know, saying that they are so they are making self-determined salaries and you know determining how much they are going to pay themselves now the uh, senate has also in return come out to refute these claims it has debunked it and called it a total false claim i want to get your reaction to this you know i saw the drama uh, over the weekend by the former president Olusegun Obasanjo when he uh, made the claim the allegation that the National Assembly cannot be the judge in their own, you know, case by according to say whatever they like as salaries. And then Adara Modu also came up, the spokesman to the National Assembly, the Senate precisely. He came out to refute that claim that no, it is the fiscal, the revenue mobilization and fiscal allocation and mobilization uh, commission that usually does salary scaling and all that to every government organization why that is a fact i think it is just misinformation the former president wasn't wrong because the national assembly as an institution is saddled with the responsibility yes. of looking at the allocations looking at appropriations looking at what goes to this organization what goes to that and the override now this is i think the area or the aspect that mr president the former president is talking about has to do in respect to the allocation that goes to their constituency projects constituency allowance and all that yes. because they come up with the template just like every other organization comes up with a template, comes up with a template of what they are expected to do with the money in the next year running year yes. so now national assembly to come up with their own budget for uh constituency projects and all that right. and right. all that so that is the area maybe president olusha Gnobasanjo is trying to talk about but he didn't really um dissect this point for people to understand so was, and that was, was why it generated was, some conflict it was it's misconstrued it, as as him claiming that they determine their salaries it is not they that it is not the national assembly that determines their own salary but they determined their constituency allowance and all that but still there are some organizations that ratified it that i think there is a mechanism that shake that and that is why you know before budgets uh, goes directly into to them yes. but right now it has they have changed that policy that there are certain commission like basin like uh Oshun, Ogun, basin and all that so there are certain commissions now that the money that goes the no the money now goes to the the only thing that you can bring contractors so the national assembly members before now they used to give them the money and some of them will use the money to throw parties and divert the money to their own personal project and their own personal business so what's what's the place of checks and balances in all of this how what organizations are saddled with the responsibility of checkmating and ensuring that even after these monies are disbursed that they are used i don't for, think there is any that that they are used for the proper projects that they have been allocated for and not for parties as you are uh, like what I, if you are following what i'm trying to explain that before now there have been a serious mess and issue around this money that is allocated to this national assembly member for constituency project there have been serious issues before now and that was why recently most recently that has been changed the money do not go to the uh, senators the money do not go to the members of house of representatives now before now the money goes to them directly but right now there has been a twist and a change to that so the money goes to it to certain commissions yes. you understand that overseas that execute those projects the only thing the national assembly member does or can do now is to see that this is my priority project this is what i want they bring a contractor they liaise with this uh, commission that this is what i want to do this is the priority project to the people in my constituency 
and they now fund it. It is not the National Assembly member uh, that funds this uh, project the way it used to be before okay. because of the abuse, because there are no proper check and balance. Nobody checks the National Assembly because the National Assembly is meant to check other the executives and the judiciary. Now, now, as we look at both of the upper legislative chambers in their respective replies, one from Senator Adara Modu to the former President Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, another from the House of Representatives has come at a crucial time when there's still some skepticism about the goodwill they showed in taking half salaries, which is yet to be implemented. Mm. They are replying that they remain patriotic and there is a perceived attempt to crucify the upper legislative chambers and put them in the back book of Nigerians. Do, do you agree? Uh, that has always been the practice of politician. Obasanjo is a politician and uh, he's not a saint either. And then, but one thing we we'll appreciate is that even as an elder statesman, he still talks about the country and some of these things that he's doing. Which, you know, there is this saying that there is no f smoke without fire. There is no smoke without fire. There may be some actum of some irregularities around this money allocation and because they use the national assembly power to influence certain decisions it's possible that they may have influenced their salary because they would threaten this organization that they may not get or they won't get what they are supposed to get do you think that this influence has somehow slowed down the proposed 50 percent salary cut as well no it is not it is the national assembly that is willing you understand? So what is Nigerians are worried about what down is, what their is salaries. delaying that decision to implement it? It is not the National Assembly that will implement. It is the fiscal allocation. That because is, you suppose yes. that there are some influences that also affect the RNC. It is not. No, this is just... Uh, it's, if there is any delay, they can't be playing on the intelligence of the Nigerian people. They said, due to the biting economy, the current economy challenge in Nigeria, that they are volunteering you understand to cut their salary by 50 percent nobody asks them to do that so i don't expect any game from the national assembly the organization the institution that is saddled with the responsibility like the office of the accountant general to the federation and all these uh ministry of finance and all that they are supposed to be the one that we implement it is not the national assembly who will implement the national assembly are, unless they have not issued an official letter to the account accountant general uh, of the federation office if that is the issue then this politics is coming from the national assembly but if that letter has been written officially that they agreed to cut down their salary by that 50 percent then there is nothing you understand that should be delaying that well, whilst we look to quickly sweep through some of the prominent issues in the news, more reactions greet this clarification as issued by the official spokesperson of the 10th Senate, Senator Adara Modu, who hopefully, if he has time, would also be in our studios to further discuss this. Now, also greeting the front pages, and another pertinent issue of concern was the invasion of the Labour House in Abuja. Now, this morning, there are calls from the NLC demanding an apology from what Nigerians now perceive to have been an invasion by the police, other than the DSS. Now, amidst this cause, they're also urging the federal government to intervene in some ways, from refraining to unduly influence people who have opposing ideologies to the yeah. government of the day. Uh, make make, make you know, meaning of this. You know, that is what it will appear uh, to, it appears, uh, because uh, over time, we have had uh, issues of uh, DSS, you know, you know, uh, going into some organization like offices of based on information anyways but right now because of the ongoing and bad governance protest you know the labor had threatened the last time that they are trying to sign certain things to join the protesters and all that to join the protest you know to seek for redress you know uh, of change of policies that is affecting the nigerian people so i think because of the position that the labor is doing the office of the hygiene and the inspector general of police uh they said that they got some information that there, there are certain things so i don't know what transpired why they did what they did but i don't know at this point it's not time that we should be having this kind of fracas you know i think we have gone past this stage we used to have this kind of issue before now that uh, dss nigerian police we just bust 
into some organizations and you know destabilized I, I, I mean, take their systems take their when, computers when it, when it and some documents get uh, some documents away but we've, we've outgrown that for some years now i've not seen such occurrences, occurrences of such situation but now that is where your face we are calling maybe we need to see what we can do well well when when the attack on the nlc headquarters in abuja here happened the first security agency to publicly deny having anything to do with the attack was the dss and we all know the history of the dss and nlc uh, the the totals that have been ongoing between them there's this underlying rift that has always been there so ordinarily NLC should have, you know, suspected the DSS of being the, the, you know, the agency behind the attack. But also in today's publications, uh, we saw that the NLC has rejected police explanation on the raid and are still asking the federal government or demanding apology. for an apology from the federal government. If you take a close look at how the attack happened, a particular floor in the building was raided books were carted and i believe they were not just books but sensitive documents. documents could this have been somewhat connected to maybe just maybe the uh, uh tussle that's you know happened between the nlc and the fg that led to the new minimum wage that is one <laughs> secondly could it also be connected to the hashtag and bad governance protest which the nlc president has you know washed his hands off and the entire nlc has not you know joined at all Yes, there was a meeting, you know, uh, there was a an executive meeting of the NLC sometimes last week and there was a communique that was drafted that they will likely join the end bad governance protesters to protest for uh, some policies that is eating hard on the economy, especially to the downtrodden that they want to join. So I want to believe that it is not, it has nothing to do with the minimum wage because this minimum wage most of the decisions were not even taken at the nlc office they were a tripartite committee and they have designated uh, uh places meeting points yes which is outside the nlc office um, i've seen this happen in the uh, in the ministry of labor and i've seen it happen in the presidency and some designated environment in abuja but not at the nlc office the most recent meetings that happened at the nlc headquarters was uh, a, an executive meeting you know called i don't know why the nlc chairman is denying to that but there was a meeting and a, a communique was drafted i don't know it's me personally i want to believe that what the police went to read is has nothing to do with the communique maybe there are more informations maybe there are certain things they get the filler they get an information maybe with time the nigerian police will do well to explain to nigeria their intention but is, isn't there a better way that the raid could have happened as opposed to them going no no, there, no there is no in, better in, way in, in the wake of there the is no better way there is no better way based on the information you and, get and vandalizing the 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 labor house no no there is no better way what, what there is no better there is no better way when you have allegation and you're suspecting that this thing can lead to maybe chaos in the society this can lead to some issues if they were genuine with their reason why they went there in the first place to wait you can't completely you know blame the nigerian police it might be for the safety of the general public so we don't need to uh Especially. take a position right now until when because i expect that there should be a, a committee the president should intervene to see if the president do not have hand in this if the presidency do not have hand in this then there should be a committee because the labor is not an organization that should be treated just like any how organization in this country yes. they are a respected body that contribute to the growth and development of the workforce and the development of this country yes. so i don't expect a rift between the nigerian police and the labor at this material time because this is a time that we need to join hands to see that we we save this country from this uh, hardship this uh economic challenge that we are having uh, now, now gentlemen uh because of time and following uh, a rejig in our lineup of our programming we're constrained to just 10 more minutes on local issues and in those 10 minutes amidst the mirrored newspapers we took we look at just two more issues and then we wrap up pressing of which has been a focus on nine billion naira expended on 88 nigerian outlets 
following our last outing, which is considered the poorest by all margins at the Paris 2024 Olympics. Now, the Labour Party's presidential candidate, Peter Obi, has been the loudest in what he says it's a failure of leadership. Many are saying, how come the Nigerian athletes were not inspired, despite an additional 100 million as dished out by the House of Reps to somewhat spur patriotism in our representation of Nigeria? You see, uh, let me tell you, this country, we are rather more reactionary than being proactive. I don't even expect the Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Obi, to be speaking now. You see, we seem to understand that when you do not have a good foundation, you can't have a befitting building on it. There are so many woes that is going on in our NFF, and Peter Obi is not even saying anything. There are a lot of uh, issues. You know, this country, Nigeria, a lot of uh, wrong people given opportunity. See, there are great Nigerians that would have represented Nigeria at the Olympic and would have come back to this country with medals, gold medals and silver. But because of um, favoritism. Uh, favoritism, nepotism, and, you know, politics, politics that have eaten deep into 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 the society into our organization sense that becloud our sense of judgment giving opportunity to the wrong people and leaving the right people nigeria is a country of about 240 million people and there are quality people there are good people there are people who are hungry there are athletes in this country that are hungry you understand to represent this country and they are very certain and then apart apart from that now it's just to look at sometimes how we implement certain things in this country yes. you get the money and it's not properly expended in training this athlete mm -hmm. the monies are not properly used in in providing all the necessary motivation to these athletes you know the, if you look at if you go to our olympics if you go to our stadium if you see where some of these guys are training you pity for this country you find that, that most times they have to struggle for themselves they use their personal money to train themselves and all that a lot of corruption so i expect that Peter will be and other people who are now talking about, you know, when you don't lay your bed, where it's how you lay your bed that you lie on it. You don't expect them to do well, magic. Well, well I, I, I also, uh, in as much as you have claimed that um, at a time like this, uh, you know, somebody like the Labour Party's presidential candidate, it's, Peter Obi, is mm. not supposed to be speaking. Yeah, I would also, um, you know, like to add no, that. No, you didn't get it. I'm not saying, I didn't say it shouldn't be speaking. I said it should not be speaking now. It should not always come out at the end of any rules. It, it should, should be should proactive. Proactive. He should have spoken. It should not be before. speaking. Poli it's too political. That's what I'm saying. It's too political. You know, you don't criticize outcomes. You criticize the process. There are a lot of things that is going on right now in this country that is not speaking. Wrongly, there are a lot of wrongdoings that is going on right now but, that is not speaking. He's waiting when there is a failure and not take advantage for a po political gain. By so doing, we will not get results. Now, now we are not talking about Peter Obi. W would you would you attribute the um, rather disappointing outing of Nigerian athletes at the Paris Olympics? You know, they crashed out of the Olympics without a single medal after billions of naira had been expended. You know, to send them there. Would you attribute this to the athletes themselves, who I think they did fantastically well? Or to the officials who were supposed to have make you certain preparations. Make certain yes. preparations. Of course, that is what I told you earlier. I had to borrow a bike. Yeah. I told you before that if you like budget ten trillion dollars for these athletes, at the end of the day, this money are not properly used in the trainings of these athletes. It has always been the culture in this part, and nobody is saying anything. That is why it's more annoying. In this part of the world, people are not punished for their wrongdoings until we begin to punish people for certain errors in when you are employed for a certain job and you're not doing it well and nobody is punishing you you find out that you will be motivated to continue doing the wrongdoings and that is what we see in almost every aspect of our society even it happens everywhere look at our, our nff look at their two last outing failed they failed you know even the uh, the coach Finidi George. Finidi George was hosted out, you know, and dis disgracefully out of uh, that job. You know, people don't get punished for their woes. And that is why you see that people find it very attractive to continue to do what they feel like they can do. Imagine, 
millions has been allocated billions have been spent and yes we are not getting proper result from the olympic the, the, the only thing nigerians have gotten so far is an apology by the minister of uh, of sports uh, uh, we are not uh, asking we're asking for probity we're asking for accountability there should be a committee that will be set up to investigate what went wrong at what point did we get it wrong that our athletes will go to the olympic and come back to this country without medal now lastly as we look to draw this conversation to a close or into a slight rejig in our lineup uh out of the pressing issues in the aviation sector where 22 air operators have had to close shop in the last 24 years there also calls for a new constitution following the 2014 comfab report which has resurfaced we just saw mm -hmm. president bola mentini mm -hmm. over the course of the weekend also established the northwest commission yes also to support development in the northwest region this is some of those conversations about how far the country needs to rejig in and the political will to do so under this administration let's just get your thoughts in a minute or two as we run you know uh tiku abubaka was very popular in 2019 with this restructuring concept and that was why it gained some level of popularity then because nigeria is ripe for restructuring and apc did promise restructuring even as at the time uh president momodu Buhari was was to contest they set up a committee then that erified the former governor of uh, kaduna state headed that they went from state to state and take concerns of the nigerian people and in that report it was clear and it was loud that the nigerian people want restructuring and that is one of the things that is affecting us like the nigerian uh, the state police was one of the issues that was talked about uh, this uh, autonomy, local government autonomy was another issue that was raised and decentralization of power, you know, from the country. And I think one way or the other, the countries, there have been some adjustments because the president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has been doing a lot in terms of looking at that report and in one way or the other, he has started implementing this restructuring. But what the people wanted is this centralization of resource control. You understand and the president is here to do anything about that and that is the major issue you understand uh that is the major issue and that is what we are expecting that the president should also look towards well we must thank you very much uh, honorable desmond for finding the time to come on the program and uh, share your thoughts on some of these national issues it's a pleasure thank you